Jordan is like a baby Steph Curry with his ability to stop and pop and with the ball in his hand. Oh, cool. Had Clarkson fall down and then hit the three. Poole keeps that dribble alive. Oh, what a fake from Jordan Poole. Believe it or not, it was once a consensus thought that Jordan Poole was a baby Steph Curry. Michael Malone even said this following the first three games of the 2021 playoffs. Jordan Poole, he's understudy, has paid attention, has done his homework, and is playing the same way. And he wasn't lying either, because in the first three playoff games of his career, at just 22 years old, Jordan Poole averaged 29, 5-3 on 67% from the field and 59% from three. Just to put this into perspective, right here are the numbers that Anthony Edwards, Luka Doncic, and the real Steph Curry recorded in their first three playoff games. Fast forward two years later, and things are a little different. On one hand, Steph Curry, is obviously Steph Curry. Whilst Ant and Luca are doing exactly what we thought they would do, Jordan Poole, on the other hand, is going scoreless in games and getting booed by his own fans. That'll be Jordan Poole's final foul of the night as he fouls out. Tough shooting night for Poole again to not score. It has gotten so bad that he is now being replaced in the starting lineup by Landry Shamit. Landry Shamit. And the only reason it took this long is because they were hoping they could somehow salvage the massive contract he was paid just a year ago. And that right there might be the root of Jordan Poole's problems. He got his money and his ring, and now he doesn't care at all. I mean, he does not care. Look at him on this play, just fly out on defense for absolutely no reason. Or how about this play, where he thinks Chris Tapps Porzingis is a 5'6", 40-year-old man at the local gym instead of a 7'3", shot blocker. You could find multiple clips a game of Jordan Poole making plays that leave you dumbfounded. I mean, is there any better indication of that than this? Number one, Jordan Poole. Shaq the pool is the gift that keeps on giving. Number one, Jordan Poole. Come on. Flipping and slide from MSG <laughs> to the pool party. Welcome to the pool jam. Anytime you become a cult figure on Shaqt in a Fool, there's a serious problem. And for some people, they believe Paul is just struggling as a result of stepping outside Steph Curry's shadow. But I'm here to tell you, everything we saw from him as a warrior suggested he should be thriving as the go-to guy. I want to take you back to March 30th of 2022. With no Steph Curry in the lineup, the Golden State Warriors were up against a Phoenix team who entered the game with a record of 51 and 14 and an elite defense. What Jordan Poole did next wasn't the work of any average player. Poole started the game off by going to work against Jay Crowder in isolation, hitting him with a nasty behind-the-back crossover into a step-back midi. And from that point on, you could see he was feeling it. Later in that same quarter, he did his best Steph Curry impersonation, receiving the ball from Dre, giving it back to Dre, and then using the screen to knock down the three. And when I say he was feeling it early, just look at this play where he brings it up in transition, goes behind the back with a crossover before a filthy step back three in the grill of Bismarck Biombo. There's a reason people around the NBA were calling him Baby Steph, and the most Steph Curry-like play came in the fourth quarter. Watch here as Paul gives the ball up to Bielitsa. He then cuts back door to create an option, which leaves Draymond at the top of the key, as Paul circles around using the Bielitsa screen to then get open for three. If that's not Steph Curry, like, I don't know what is. And this wasn't a one-off performance. Over a stretch of 17 games without Steph Curry, he averaged 26 points, 6 assists, and 5 boards, making Curry-like plays routinely. And the thing is, these weren't empty numbers either. After a 15-2 start to the season, the Dubs were in danger of dropping to the 5th or 6th seed in the absence of Steph. But Paul was the reason they kept that 3rd seed, and as a result, won the chip. So how? How is it possible that someone this talented and promising could turn into the mess of a player he currently is? I know what you guys are thinking. It was Draymond Green's doing. And whilst being knocked out by your own teammate certainly doesn't help, once again with Steph out injured last year, it was Poole who picked up the slack, averaging 26 and 5 in 26 games without him. And do you want to hear something crazy? Over those two seasons, in the 43 games Poole played without Curry, the Dubs had a record of 
both 22 and 21. In the 38 games Kevin Durant and the Prime Warriors played without Curry, they had a record of 21 and 17. Only fractionally better. So again, I ask you guys, what happened to Jordan Poole? Well, before we talk about some of the potential off-court downfalls, just strictly speaking from a basketball perspective, there are two parts of his game that we consistently saw in Golden State, which we haven't seen in Washington, and that was his playmaking and ability to get to the free throw line. Everyone sees Paul as a perimeter specialist that hunts shots from beyond the arc, but it was his combination of shooting and slashing that made him so unique, averaging over seven free throw attempts a game last year as the number one option. This season, he's averaging a measly three free throw attempts a game. And this is going to sound hilarious, but ironically, a big source of Paul's production came from his chemistry with Draymond Green. Similar to Steph Curry, they built some really strong chemistry, well, on the court at least, with Dre's ability to find Paul cutting to the rim out of post-ups, which often led to easy buckets, or could lead to free throws as well with the defense out of whack. Not only did it help Paul getting to the rim, but from all spots on the floor, the chemistry he had with Draymond was again, ironically, very evident. Just look at this play against two elite defenders. Green comes to set the screen on McDaniels. McDaniels does a great job at recovering, so Paul gives it up to Draymond, who gives it back to Paul, who then hits the jumper in Gobert's face. These are the kind of plays that are significantly harder to replicate on a team that isn't very good or who you don't have much chemistry with. In general, the Warriors' motion offense with constant movement from guys like Clay, DiVincenzo, and of course Steph was a big reason Paul was able to get open alongside of the work he did. It was a very mutually beneficial relationship, having so many good off-ball movers alongside playmaking and a system that suited him well. But with that being said, that still doesn't explain how you can go from a budding young star to this. So again, the question has to be asked, how did it get this bad? Well, I hate to say it, but it's hard to think it was anything other than complacency. I mean, he said it himself. It's a bit different. Like once your contract is signed and once you got a ring, essentially everything that needed to be done in Golden State got done. I got a ring, made sure my family is straight, a good situation to come in and just kind of have my own team play my own type of basketball. And who can really blame him? It sounds like he's living the dream, making millions of dollars, having already won a chip and played on an elite team. Now he can play on a team with zero Zero expectations and zero responsibility whilst earning guaranteed money because they can't drop him from the rotation or move him on. I'm not sure what's next for Jordan Poole, but it's hard to believe he's reached this point in his career. Anyways, if you did make it to this point in the video, consider subscribing for more content like this. Either way, have a great day. Bye.